Hey, it's Dan here at Intelli. Wanted to spend some time today to walk through the very basic fundamentals of HL7 and a couple of the message types, specifically the SIU and the ADT. You know, internally, we've been doing some training and some knowledge transfers around HL7 and thought it was worthwhile to bring it to the masses and share a brief overview with you all. So we'll start off today by just ba answering the basic question, what it what is HL7? Um, so HL7 is a set of standards and a methodology um, that's meant to be flexible, yet understood widely um, to transfer and share data between software applications, um, healthcare organizations, different systems, all within the healthcare domain. Um, it's called Health Level 7. Um, it focuses on the application layer, which is layer seven, hence the name. Um, and the Health Level 7 International is the standards organization responsible for setting this methodology. HL7 has been around for decades. It's the tried and true method of transferring and sharing data within the healthcare space. Um, but the protocols and the formats and the standards have evolved a lot over time. Um, and then there are very, you know, different standards um, for different purposes. Um, what we'll be talking about today is you know, a subset of version 2, 2x um, messaging standard. So you'll commonly hear that referred to as HL7 v2. Um, but there are other standards as well. There's v3. Um, there's clinical document architecture. Um, there's continuity of care document. And then finally, the, the new kid on the block, which is FIRE, Fast Healthcare Interoperability Resources, which really transforms a lot of the other standards into JSON and RESTful API services. Um, that you know, is a huge advancement in the way we share healthcare data, um, but it, it is taking a while to implement. So what we see today is a lot of people still relying on HL7 v2, um, the messaging protocol and standard um, that you know flat file pipe limited message is still king um, and that's what we're going to get into today so you might be asking like how, how does this work what is HL7 what's an HL7 message type um, I started working in healthcare you know almost 10 years ago and I, you know, this terminology was thrown around constantly all the time you know it was it was foreign um, and it really is, it's a foreign language. There's, you know, it's a way to communicate. There's a standard, um, just like, you know, there's you know, translators um, and, you know, ways that we communicate between, you know, an interface between individuals and, you know, transfer information. It, it works the same way. Um, but in healthcare um, with HL7 communication um, in, in integration, um, there's an interface. Um, and the interface provides a connection point between two different hospital systems or, um, you know, the software that those hospital systems provide. Um, and, and generally this is, this is accomplished via site to site VPN connection, um, you know, referred to as a point to point, um, but as a secure connection between two different systems. So when an event occurs, um, in you know, a healthcare organization with a patient or a provider. Um, and there is a whole list of, you know, standard event types. Um, so anytime one of these events happens in, you know, the, the patient and clinical life cycle um, that qualifies, will be a message that's generated and written. Um, and that contains a collection of segments. And these segments are standard per message type. Um, and each segment has predefined fields. Um, so the segment is going to be denoted by a three letter acronym. Um, so there's, there's many, but there's, you know, PID, patient identify, identification, PV1, the visit, scheduling, so the scheduling information. Um, there's the MSH, so the header record, the EVNs, the event record, um, and, and, you know, the list goes on. Um, but you'll be able to pick out in the message type each individual segment by that three-letter acronym, and then a carriage return, um, so fundamentally a new line, um, will you know queue up a, an additional segment. Um, so each of these segments have fields. The fields have 
a specified data type, um, the fields can get a little confusing because they're pipe delimited and then they're sub delimiters, um, but, but it all does follow a standard. Um, it's a loose standard. There are a lot of edge cases, uh, but you know, it is you know, a standard that you know, anybody can interpret. Um, it's in a human readable format, um, although you know, it, it is a little tough to read at times. Um, so when these messages are generated, uh, they're transmitted um, via point-to-point -point connection, so or TCP, um, to the destination, or they could be sent um, via an SFTP protocol and, and dropped in a folder location. Um, when the destination system receives this message, it's going to parse the message out, ingest or ingest it, parse it out, um, and interpret it, and you know then take whatever type of you know business process or orchestration that they want to take on the data that they just received. Um, and then, you know, use it in, you know, clinical workflows um, or to, you know, inform other providers or software applications. So let's move on and break down the, the HL7 message structure slightly. Um, so within your know, HL7 V2 messaging standards, um, there's a number of different versions within that. So this is going to define the general message structure of that pipe limited you know, HL7 message. Um, I will say these are very um, similar in nature, but there, there are some nuances as these versions have evolved. Um, so within the, the version 2, you'll see 2.3, 2.31, 2.5, um, and the, the point one, um, that extra, extra digit on the end, just, there's a slight modification. It's not a totally new version. Um, it's more of like a patch, if you will. Um, this version will be defined in the message type. So based on, you know, seeing that in the header record of this message, you know, the system will know how to interpret and parse this message out based on the version. Um, so secondly, there's a message type. Um, and this really is going to be, you know, the subset of events that occur. Um, so there's, you know, some example message types are, are scheduling, um, demographic orders, results. Um, there's a number of others, um, but these are, you know, some of the most common. Um, and these message types are going to define um, what information is going to be contained and what's required in those messages, um, and then you know, define the overall structure. Um, and finally, we've got the message trigger. You know, we've talked about this a little bit, um, but this is just going to define when the message is generated. Um, so as you can see, there's you know, demographics, um, that's gonna map back to the ADT uh, message type. So in AO1 for an admit, when a patient's admitted, you know, a message is going to be generated and written out um with all of the information about that patient who was just admitted about the you know uh visit so the, the actual encounter um and then there are a number of other optional fields within that message type um that could you know that can be included um, in the message um similar to scheduling um so this will you know occur when there's a new appointment your scheduled appointment modified canceled appointment Anytime that occurs, right, any one of those events, um, a message is going to be generated with all of the scheduling details um, and resources, um, the provider and the patient information. So the message trigger really is, you know, when this happens, this is the message you're going to write out. And that's the fundamental logic of the trigger um, in the HL7 architecture. So let's, you know, work on putting this all together. Um, and we'll, we'll first start with the ADT. The ADT is a super, super common type of HL7 message. Um, and, you know, really kind of, it stands for admit, discharge, and transfer. So it's, it's kind of the gates of entry um, for a patient coming into or moving around or being discharged or having their information updated, um, you know, within a health system software and within the health system in general. Um, so this first message, um, you know, we'll start off by, you know, just saying 
know, we can see this is an ADT message. We can see that right there. Um, and this is in the MSH, so the header record. Um, we can see that it's a patient registration and we can see that because it's an AO4. And if we quickly flip back to the other screen, we can see that the register patient is the AO4 event type um, and message trigger. And we know that the standard is 2.5 by that last field in, in the MSH record. Um, we can do this quickly on, a, on another example. Um, so this is an ADT message type for an admission. Um, so patients actually admitted to the hospital. Um, and based on that last field, you can see the carriage return for the next segment, the EBN segment. And that last field, it's, a, you know, it's sent in version 2.3. So if we pick apart these fields a little bit, this is gonna tell us a little bit about the patient. So we know that you know now the PID segment, that's the patient identifier um, or identification segment. Um, and the PV1 is the segment uh, for patient visits, so all the visit details. Um, you can see in here that uh, between those two message types, both those segments are present. Um, and those are always going to be required in the ADT. Um, message type. Um, what we see in the top is that NK1, so that's next of kin. So there's all these additional fields um, that can supply supplemental information. And those are optional. Um, they, they don't have to be included, but many times they, they will be. Um, it's important to, you know, for the system that's receiving that data to know how to interpret any field you know, that's contained within these HL7 messages. Um, down here, we can see that there's an IN1 um, and IN2. So this is, you know, insurance information, primary insurance, secondary insurance. But if we pick apart the PID, uh, the PID segment, um, as it's, you know, called you know, slang, um, you can see that there's fields for, you know, IDs. And these carrots here are these subdelimiter fields. So within a you know, field, there can be multiple different, you know, subfields. Um, and those are denoted by the character. Um, you can see here we have the patient name, um, we've got the date of birth, we've got the sex, um, I believe that's race, um, but I'd have to double check. And you know, even after interpreting and re reading these messages for um, for many years now, um, you know, I still you know I have to you know kind of pick apart the message and, and go back to my reference material. So at the end of this, we'll we'll get you know share some resources. Um, that have all of the segments and field mappings and are great resources to you know reference as you're looking at these messages and you know trying to decipher um, what's in them um, to, to bump back up against and and, and check um, but then we see the address we see the phone number um, and then the the visit information down here so let's hop over and we'll do this same exercise with an SIU um, and the SIU is very similar. I mean, one of the things to point out here is that um, the message follows the same structure. You can see the header record. You can see the patient identification record and see the visit record. You can also see a number of other fields. So it's a different message type. It's a you know, different trigger um, and it's gonna contain a different set of, of resources. Um, but if we go through that same exercise, you know, we can now see is an SIU message, which is a scheduling message for a new appointment. And we can pick that out specifically right here by the S12. So if we hop back over here, we can see that the S12 is a new appointment. So this patient scheduled a new appointment with their provider. Um, and the HL7 version and format that the system is using is version 2.3. Um, so that clearly defines for the destination system what format this data is coming in um, and how it's coming in and what's going to be contained in it. Um, some additional fields in the SIU message type. Um, so we have the scheduling activity and information. That's the SCH segment as a required segment in the scheduling message type. Um, and you can see some visit information here. You can see the uh, you know, appointment um, identifier, you can see the duration and the date. 
um, and then you can see the you know status of the appointment so the patient arrived um, and then down here we have some scheduling resource fields so the NTE is the, the note um, it looks like this is a note for a annual health check um, so that's you know for the service um, but we have you know, resource fields for the location provider general resource um, the service that's being done. So that's going to just define what resources are being used to, you know, service and you know, be involved really in this appointment for the patient. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of other, um, you know, this is, these are pretty stripped down HL7 messages. So there's other optional fields that may come over in here. Um, like I said, you know, before, you know, picking these apart is, is tricky. Um, and, you know, it's, it is in human readable format, but we'll call it, we'll call it barely. Um, so it does take a little bit of, of effort um, to parse through and, and, you know, read and decipher these messages. Um, so I included some helpful resources down here at the bottom. Um, HL7 is a great, great website, hl7.org. Um, you can go out there and look at all of the standards, all the segments, all the fields, um, tons of good related industry information um around hl7 ccd ccda um fire um and and all the other you know kind of standards that you know health level seven international um governs um and then the next is charistics um so charistics is a another website and it's it's basically just the dictionary for hl7 very intuitive user friendly um you can search um, by field by segment um, by message type um, and, and parse it out by different versions to see, you know, kind of the idiosyncratic, you know, differences between um, the, the different message types. Um, so I'd highly encourage you to do that. Um, and I hope that, you know, if you didn't know HL7, um, you know it a little bit better now. And if you did know HL7, um, you still, you know, got something out of this and learned, you know, learned from it. Um, HL7 is, is awesome um, and it's you know here to stay in one format or another, whether it's in V2 or Fire, um, and it's important to know. Um, so likewise, if you have any questions, um, you know, feel free to you know reach out um, you know, on LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, my email is daniel.pluard at tele.io. Um, I'm happy to be a re resource for you know, anything HL7 or, or healthcare data and integration wise. Thanks for joining today.